welcome Mesa Chamber of Commerce Chair Joe Holmes. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 2015 Mayor's State of the City Breakfast. I'm Joe Holmes, Chairman of the Board of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce, and we're excited to be presenting this sold-out event again this year. And I'd like to begin by recognizing some special guests we have in the audience. Uh, ask that you hold your applause until we've recognized and introduced all these guests. City Manager Chris Brady and the following elected officials. Mesa Council Members, Vice Mayor Dennis Cavanaugh, Council Member Dave Richens, Council Member Alex Finter, Council Member Chris Glover, Council Member David Luna, Council Member Kevin Thompson. We also have with us former Mesa Mayors, Scott Smith, Keno Hawker, and Don Strau. Other East Valley Municipal elected officials here with us today, Mayor John Lewis of Gilbert, Mayor Gail Barney of Queen Creek, Mayor Jim Lane of Scottsdale. State legislators, Senator Bob Worsley, Senator David Farnsworth, Representative Andrew Sherwood, Representative Doug Coleman, Representative Juan Mendez, Representative Russell Rusty Bowers, and Supervisors, Chairman Steve Chukri and Supervisor Denny Barney. So please accept my apologies if, if I've missed anyone, and let's welcome these folks out today. <clears throat> we also have a great group of sponsors we'd like to recognize that help make this event possible. Uh, this year there are more than 20 sponsors uh, for the event, and you can see their names listed here on the screens. We thank you for your continued support of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce and the mayor's breakfast. This morning, we've invited, uh, thank you, <laughs> we've invited chamber member Chris Zaharis, executive vice president at Empire Southwest to introduce Mayor Giles. Empire is one of the largest Caterpillar dealers in the world, and they've called Mesa home for over 15 year, 50 years. Please welcome Mr. Chris Zaharis. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. What a great event. You know, like Mayor Giles, I'm a lifelong Mesa resident, and I'm so fond of this community. I'm also proud that Empire is a member of the Mesa business community. I'm proud this morning to represent the 1,600 employees of Empire, 900 of whom are based at our headquarters here in Mesa. Empire is uh, fortunate enough to be the exclusive Caterpillar dealership here in Mesa, part of California and part of northern Mexico. And we serve industries as broad and diverse as construction, mining, agriculture, power, technology. And uh, we, are, we are very fortunate to, to be able to participate in the economy of Mesa. And we're off to a great start here in 2015. What a, what a fun time it's been with so many great activities and so many guests that we've hosted. And then uh, to top that off such a great January, we had such incredible news yesterday and we look forward to welcoming Apple into our community. At Empire, we recently... <laughs> at Empire, we recently went through a construction project and, and expansion at our Mesa headquarters, and we, uh, we added a 120,000 square foot um, shop and office building to increase our capacity and to prepare us for the future. And you can see a couple pictures behind me of this new facility, and it's a state-of-the-art component rebuild center of which we are very proud. And I just want to thank city staff for their help in, in bringing this to reality. We started a very strong relationship with the city several years ago when we annexed, and appreciate their, their help along the way. And more, more recently with this expansion, the building department helped us through the design, the permitting, and inspection phase. And what we noticed was the city staff's commitment to helping removing obstacles and helping us solve problems. And frankly, it's not a level of commitment that we've experienced in many other communities. And we have experience of serving in over 20 other communities. So we thank city staff for their accommodating nature. Thank you. At Empire, we're proud of our corporate values, one of which includes 
stewardship. And in our minds, this is all about adding to rather than taking from. It is about trying to make uh, the places where we serve better and stronger for the future. And we are especially passionate about investing in the next generation. We're fortunate to have a mayor who also understands the importance of creating a strong foundation for a strong future. And we are, we are so pleased to have the right mayor at the right time, one who has a vision for what's next, but has a strong understanding and appreciation for Mesa's rich history. <clears throat> the first time I met Mayor Giles was, was many years ago after he convinced a very smart and very beautiful sister of one of my friends to marry him. <laughs> Don, we'd like to thank you for your support of Mayor Giles and his service to our city. <clears throat> I also observed Mayor Giles as he served as a council member from 1996 to 2000, during which time he served with distinction and honor and, and built his reputation here in the community. <clears throat> he also prepared himself for future service. And although it took a few years for him to come back into, the, into public service, he knew what he was getting into. And he was, he was prepared and excited and enthused about this opportunity. And that's why I believe that we have the right mayor at the right time. And we are fortunate to have such a qualified, funny, warm, and genuine individual serving as our mayor at this time. And it is my honor to welcome to the stage my friend and Mesa's 40th mayor, Mayor John Giles. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been mayor for four and a half months, so met, you guys are apparently pretty easily impressed. So uh, <laughs> thanks for the nice uh, introduction and, and then the very warm uh, reception. Uh, I would like to thank Chris. Uh, empire is appropriately named. I mean, it is uh, an empire. It's a, it's a huge uh, business, and it's, uh, I think it was actually named prior to the Star Wars uh, movies coming out, <laughs> but uh, very appropriately named. Uh, only the good force is the, the only vibes I've ever gotten out at Empire, but uh, we're very proud to have them and, and I'm very appreciative for Chris and his support. Also, I'd like to thank the Mesa Chamber of Commerce, who is our host today. Um, when I was sworn in four and a half months ago, I tried to make a joke uh, at the time saying that I, part of my job description I saw as being an assistant to Sally Harrison, who is the, the president of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Sally apparently didn't take it as a joke because for the last several months, she's been a very difficult taskmaster. Um, so I appreciate, uh, I've just been doing whatever Sally has told me to do, and so far it's worked out for me. So uh, that's my, we're, we're gonna stick with that, Sally. But thank you for all the hard work, and hopefully, if there's anyone here who is a Mesa business person that is not a member of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce, you're really missing the boat. Uh, I've been, a, a, my business has been a member of the Chamber for, 20 plus years, and, and we've always gotten a, a lot of great uh, benefits from that. So I encourage you to look at the chamber. And then I'd also just like to thank you for being here. Uh, this is such an impressive audience. Uh, as I had the great privilege of going around and shaking hands and, and uh, just hobnobbing with the, all the, the movers and shakers that are here today, I was just struck with what strength we have in our community. Just look around at the people in this room and the, the businesses that are here, the institutions that are here. Uh, it truly is uh, reflective of what a great city that we live in, what a, what a strong community we have. So uh, on behalf of Mesa City Government, thank you for your support, not only of this event, but of uh, everything that goes on in our, in our community. You are um, really the main reason that we are such a strong and, and vibrant community. Um, also, I'd like to uh, ex especially thank the city council members that are here. And uh, they were introduced previously, but I, I think they deserve another shout out. Uh, Dennis Kavanaugh, our vice mayor, is here. Dennis, can you stand up and wave to the crowd? <clears throat> Dennis and I both ran for the city council back in 1996, and Dennis has been there continually almost since then. He's, the, he's in his fourth term as a Mesa City Council member, which makes him far and away the longest tenured city council member in the history of Mesa. So he's an institution in our community, and, and I really value his friendship and 
excited that he is our vice mayor. Dave Richens, Dave, can you stand? Uh, Dave is in the middle of his second term, and uh, believe it or not, he, uh, Dave is actually a very intelligent person. You can't quite gather that, um, <laughs> always. Uh, but w w <laughs> Dave is, is a real asset on our, on our council. Uh, he, he really is uh, very sharp, and I, again, much like Sally, just kind of follow Dave's uh, lead on a lot of things. Uh, Alex Finter, uh, our uh, former mayor, mayor, Alex Finter. Um, I think some of you know, Alex and I have been friends literally since elementary school. Um, and so uh, it's, it's, it feels like home when I uh, come to a city council meeting and Alex is there. Alex uh, spent his whole life serving the city of Mesa, as many of you might know. He had a, a long and, and very distinguished career in our fire department and, and has served uh, wonderfully on the city council. Chris Glover, Chris, can you stand? Chris was uh, just elected to a second four-year term. Uh, Chris is uh, gifted in, in dealing with people. Uh, Chris is a, a loved by so many people in our community because of his dedication to what he does. So Chris, we really appreciate you as well. Uh, David Luna, could you please stand? David. <clears throat> uh, David is probably so sick and tired of us making such a big deal out of him. But uh, David is the first Hispanic voted uh, to be a member of the Mesa City Council. That is historic. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, David is a part of our council. And uh, hopefully at some point we'll get over the fact that he's so historic and we'll start treating him like a normal person. And, uh, that'll be good for the dynamics of our organization, I'm sure. But uh, if we were to, if there were a Mount Rushmore in, in Mesa, I think David's bust would be there. He's just uh, that big of a figure. We really appreciate him. And then Kevin Thompson. Kevin, wave to the crowd. <laughs> Kevin was just, just barely elected, but I got to tell you, he's uh, hit the ground running. There's no one with more enthusiasm and more dedication and more uh, desire to serve our community. Uh, I, he's already been nominated for Rookie of the Year, frankly. So uh, Kevin is going to be a, a, a tremendous blessing. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is we have got a great city council in Mesa. Uh, and you should expect great things from this city council. I, I hope that you will hold us to a very high standard and uh, let us know if we are disappointing you, because you ought to expect great things from this council. These are all very talented uh, individuals, and we're going to work together to make really good things happen in the city. Um, also, I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Brady, our city manager. Um, we are very fortunate to have a very well-managed city. Uh, as you know, Mesa is a very large community, about a half a million people. Uh, it's a huge enterprise, um, but it's managed very conservatively, very frugally, the hardworking uh, taxpayers of the city of Mesa, I think, can take great pride in the way that we operate as an organization. And that's due in large part to Mr. Brady and his excellent staff. So I want you to know that Mesa is a very well-managed community. <clears throat> I, I tried to take an opportunity to get around and shake as many hands as I could this morning. Uh, and over the last four and a half months, I've been doing a lot of the same thing, frankly. And the question that, I'm, uh, that I get very often, is, as you might predict, is, so how do you like being the mayor? Uh, so for the one or two people that I perhaps haven't spoken with yet this morning, uh, I'm sure that's the, the question that's uh, at the front of, your, uh, front of your brain right now. Um, and so let me go ahead and answer that. I love being the mayor of Mesa, Arizona. This uh, is the funnest job that anyone could ever imagine. Uh, Mesa is a really an exciting place. There's so much going on right now. And uh, every morning I get up excited to go to work and uh, typically come home late and just uh, say a, a prayer of thanks for what a great day I, I've had and, and uh, the opportunity I have to get up and do the same thing the next day. This is a great job. This is a great community. Um, and I just feel so blessed to have this opportunity. Uh, the other question that you're probably asking, and it, it's kind of begged by the, the title of this um, event today, the state of the city, what is the state of Mesa, Arizona? How are we doing? Are we kind of good, kind of bad, kind of in between? Things 
positive, negative. Um, and let me tell you, we're doing great, okay? The city of Mesa, uh, as you, I, th I think particularly the people in this, this, uh, this room right now that are in touch with what's going on in our community, uh, I can't tell you how excited I am and how well we're doing as a community. Uh, the main thing I like about Mesa, and I think probably many, most of all of you would agree with me, is we've got some great people that live here. Uh, that's, what, that's why I live here. I, I imagine that's why you live here as well. But in addition to the great people, we've got some really great businesses. Um, I know you were following the news yesterday. You know that we, we added a really great business to our uh, covey of businesses yesterday. And I'll, I, I am anxious to tell you what I know about that and the details of that in just a minute. But in addition to the great businesses, we've got great schools. Uh, I see uh, Sally on the front row here for me, but uh, Dr. Cowan is here. Uh, I know we've got Dr. Pan is here as well. We've got great education institutions in the city of Mesa. We've got great parks. We've got great swimming pools. We've got great recreation centers. We've got great libraries and museums. Uh, just a few short weeks from now will be the center of the universe because it will be spring training. Uh, we've just got so many wonderful things going on in our community. We've also got some really great stories to tell. Um, across the street from, now, from here, in another month or two, we'll open a, a beautiful facility called Helen's Hope Chest. I hope that everyone in here knows a little bit about that. It's a facility that's going to be a great source of support for the foster care parents, not only in Mesa, but throughout the state of Arizona. Uh, and it's something that as a community, we ought to take great pride in. Um, we also, uh, later this month, we'll have the Phoenix Marathon running up and down the streets of Mesa. The Phoenix Marathon, Marathon is actually the Mesa Marathon, but it's got a cool name, the Phoenix Marathon. We're working on changing that, by the way. Um, it's going to be a great event. And also, I wanted to give a shout out to the Mesa Hohokams who are here. Uh, during the month of March, uh, they're a great example to me of why I'm proud of Mesa. During the month of March, the members of that organization really donate just about all of their time to manage the, the spring training facilities that we have. And we're doubling down on spring training, as you know, this year. We're going to have both the Cubs, Park, and the A's at Hoho Camp. So uh, that organization is really going to be tested during the month of March. If there's anyone in here that is uh, the least bit interested in supporting that movement, please contact the Hoho Camp. I'm sure they need additional volunteers to staff two big ballparks this year. But those are just a few of the reasons why Mesa is doing so well and why I'm so excited to be the mayor of Mesa. Uh, but in spite of how well we're doing, I got to tell you that, uh, that my approach to this and the reason why I was so excited to run for mayor is my uh, firmly held belief that we, as a community, we can be doing better than we are now. Uh, we're doing well, like, like I just said, but um, I don't think anyone in this room is content with where we're at. I think those who are um, realize that, or maybe they don't realize, but if we're standing still, we're, we're slipping. Uh, when you're riding a bike, if you're coasting, you got to be going downhill, right? So as a community, if we want to maintain where we're at, uh, that's great. But I think uh, as a mayor, my job is to try to push us to, to do a little bit better. Uh, and for that reason, we've adopted this logo uh, for the mayor's office, and, and hopefully there'll be some traction throughout the community. It's called Next Mesa. I've always been a big fan of the city logo. As you can see, it's got these three tiered flat top mesas, one in front of the other. Uh, to me, that kind of begs this, this question and is a, is a great example of, of the, the concept that I'm talking about. We are, we are at a certain level as a community, and that's good. That's not a bad place to be, but there's a, there's a better place to go. There's a higher level. So um, my, I see my job as mayor to encourage and support and to help our community to go to that next level as a community. Uh, I'm not interested in being a caretaker. I'm not interested in maintaining the status quo. Uh, my job description, I think, is to increase the prosperity of Mesa, Arizona. Uh, getting to that level, to that next Mesa, is going to require the energy and the ideas and the dedication of everybody in this room, as well as uh, as many people outside of this room as we can uh, incorporate into that. So I, I'm, in, I'm anxious to engage with everyone, with this council, with the members of our community, to get us to that new level as a community. Um, to that end, we've been soliciting some feedback from members of our community. 
and we prepared a video with some of their responses, so I'd direct your attention to the video screen for that now. Thank you. My next Mesa is Open Lane downtown. My next Mesa uses art to express itself. My next Mesa is limitless. Where I'll find my next job. Blazing new trails. My next Mesa is where my kids can grow strong and confident. A place for my children to buy a home. It's all about the community. It's existing to make a difference in people's lives through excellent patient care. Reaching new heights. Working together to innovate. Entrepreneurship and a bumping scene downtown. My next Mesa. 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 My next Mesa has a lot of stories to tell. <clears throat> so specifically, thank you. Specifically today, I'd like to talk about three different topics of this next Mesa concept. The first is going to be what we can do to strengthen the Mesa economy. The second is going to be what can we do to create more and better great places uh, in Mesa. And the third is uh, our desire that Mesa is perceived as a community that respects everyone and, and that is welcoming, uh, both locally and, and nationally and globally. Um, so let's start first with talking about the Mesa economy for just a little bit. Again, as I indicated earlier, I see my job description as increasing the prosperity of the city of Mesa. Um, I, it, I think it's no secret that there are some parts of our town that as we drive through, there's some signs of uh, a little rag, ragtaggedy uh, atmosphere. Uh, we've got some aesthetically challenged neighborhoods uh, in different parts of our town, particularly uh, in in my home neighborhood of West Mesa. Uh, that's, uh, it, uh, being a native Mason, I gotta tell you that that concerns me. And one of my great desires as, as mayor is to see some physical improvement in those neighborhoods that are, that are challenged in our community. Some of the uh, commercial properties and residential properties that are showing signs of um, wear and tear. How do we do that? That's a big challenge. Well, I got to tell you, I think we're making some real good progress in that area right now. There are neighborhoods in our community that are making strong comebacks. Um, about, and I, just I'll share a personal story with you. About 10 years ago or so, uh, I saw an ad in the, in the paper from the city of Mesa talking about a property that had been condemned and was scheduled for demolition, but it was a historic property. And so the city was soliciting, is there anyone in the community brain damaged enough to want to adopt this property. Uh, having recently completed a, uh, a, a tour on the Mesa City Council, I was full of civic uh, enthusiasm and a love for historic properties. Uh, so I looked into that challenge and learned what everyone else had learned that had already looked into this project, which was that uh, the financial cost of rehabbing this building would far exceed the value that this building would ever represent. Uh, but I fell in love with the building. It's a, it was a historic property with great history and uh, took on the challenge and, and adopted that building as, as, the, as the office for my, my law practice. I gotta tell you, I, I, every day um, that I walk into that building, I am so glad that I did that. It's, it's a beautiful building, the, the floors creak, the windows stick, but it's got, it's got character and it's, it's a historic part of Mesa. Uh, the other challenging part of this uh, story is that this building was in a really lousy neighborhood. It was, a, frankly, a little bit scary uh, to go to work and to sometimes. But uh, me taking on that challenge and some of the other uh, property owners in that neighborhood adopting the same attitude uh, had a dramatic turnaround impact on that neighborhood. And I gotta tell you right now, there's nobody in this room that would be, that would hesitate at all to, to own a home or a property in that neighborhood. It's that good. Uh, just a week ago, I noticed there was a, a house listed for sale across the street from this property for over a half a million dollars. Uh, 10 years ago, people were running away from this neighborhood. Uh, a very similar story, the house that uh, my brother and I grew up in, uh, located just the other side of university from where we're standing right now. 
um, probably a 60, 70 year old neighborhood. Uh, my siblings and I listed that property for sale less than a year ago. Uh, it sold for more than the asking price before a sign ever went up because that neighborhood is so healthy, so sought after. There's a, a renaissance that's going on in that neighborhood. There are young families that are just lining up and excited to be a part of that neighborhood. Um, we can duplicate these stories throughout our community. Uh, the, the neighborhoods and the commercial properties that are challenged with the support of the city and with the enthusiasm of the community can come back and can be sources of pride. Uh, the other part of my job uh, has to do, I think, with promoting the financial prosperity of our community. In other words, helping to get new, high-paying jobs to our community. Not just jobs, but careers, the types of jobs that a family can, can build a life around. Uh, as you know, as you heard yesterday, we're making some great success in that area, I have to say. Uh, Chris is, and the Empire is a great example of the business expansion and the new jobs that are coming to Mesa. Uh, there's another great example that I'd like to share with you as well. We have a video that talks about uh, the great things that Lee Benson and Able Engineering are doing, and uh, I'd like to share that with you right now. Able Engineering repairs, overhauls, and uh, manufactures aircraft components for aircraft operators around the world. We have about uh, 1,000 customers in 60 countries. I was the first employee in 1982, and we did a very specialized electroplating process. We called it brush plating. And in 93, uh, that business pretty much lost its only customer overnight, and I purchased the company. We had uh, two people left standing with myself. Went a completely different direction, and we built it into what we have here today. So when I think about the future of ABLE, today we have close to 500 employees, and we'll add probably at least 100 more employees in 2015. This year, we planted seeds for four additional businesses last year that each, on their own in three to five years, can be as bigger, bigger than everything we have today. We continue to use um, uh, the facility here, the resources of the City of Mesa, and you know, all that comes together for us because the partnership has continued uh, ever since we moved into the building. And nothing really stopped. Um, in, in previous uh, ventures, moving into different facilities around the valley, uh, once we got in, uh, the relationship subsided, but with the City of Mesa, it's actually improved. In fact, they're helping us expand onto the building an additional 50,000 square feet, and they've just been a fantastic partner. A big part of the future and what's next is going to be adding onto the facility. Uh, one of the new businesses that we added was doing heavy maintenance on entire helicopters. In fact, that's what we see around us here today. And that business can grow, as I said earlier, to be bigger than virtually everything we're doing collectively today. And that's just one of four businesses that we added in 2014 that have equal or more potential to that. But we're doing business in a lot of countries around the world. We're growing like crazy. We're putting a lot of resources to growing even more internationally. There's no way we could do any of that without having a very well-run business. So for me, I spend virtually 90% of my time working on developing talent and making sure that we have a very well-run business so we can execute on all of our plans for growth. I think about what the City of Mesa has done for us and our ability to significantly grow because of the partnership. And now we have hundreds of additional families thriving in the City of Mesa uh, with high-paying jobs, and we're just going to continue that into the future. <clears throat> Thank you, Lee, for your uh, involvement in the city of Mesa, for bringing those great high-paying jobs to Mesa. Um, let me also uh, talk a little bit about the events of yesterday. I think everyone in the room is aware of the, the great announcement. Uh, I, was, uh, I was so excited to yesterday participate uh, with Governor Ducey in announcing that Apple uh, is making a major uh, commitment to Mesa, Arizona. Uh, you may know that uh, for many years, Apple, well, for always, Apple has had one uh, command center, one corporate headquarters in Cupertino, California. Uh, as of yesterday, there is one other uh, global uh, command center in the Apple franchise, and that's in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, this is... Uh, this facility will be the largest single investment that Apple has ever made in any facility uh, anywhere in the world. 
It's going to have a 100, over 150 Apple full-time employees. These will be uh, high-paying uh, executive type employees. Uh, and they will, there will, it's a 30-year commitment in the city of Mesa. Over the next uh, 10 years, there'll be $2 billion invested in that building. New construction, new uh, sales tax, uh, great money uh, that, that's coming into our community. Um, and it's going to be uh, a source of pride and a source of cachet and a source of uh, uh, just a, a great sales uh, opportunity for the city of Mesa. Uh, in addition to the 150 full-time Apple employees, there's going to continually be between 300 and 500 contractors that will be improving that building so that it stays uh, at the peak of uh, technical uh, expertise. So um, I'm not, I don't think I'm, I'm prone to exaggeration normally, but it would be really impossible to overstate the significance of uh, the events of yesterday and what's going to transpire over the next several years as Apple uh, becomes so closely identified with the city of Mesa. So that's great news. That's great news for, for us, but it's also great news for that part of town. Uh, as you know, we have been uh, doing our best to uh, develop the Elliott Road high-tech corridor uh, in the, the gateway part of our community. This Apple facility sits at the corner of Signal Butte and Elliott, but it is, it's going to be the anchor for that entire stretch where uh, you'll hopefully see uh, announcement after announcement over the next several years similar to what we saw yesterday. Um, sticking with that part of town, let me just continue to brag, if you don't mind, a little bit. Uh, the, in addition to the Elliott Road corridor, there's, of course, just the Gateway campus itself. Um, the Gateway area is home to 10,000 jobs and $1.3 billion in annual economic activity. I got to tell you, um, I think Mayor Hawker will agree with me. Uh, 20 years ago, when we first started writing checks, probably more than 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when we started writing checks to try to hopefully uh, see something de develop out at the Gateway area. It took a lot of imagination, it took a lot of hope, a lot of faith, uh, but it's just been so rewarding for our community to see how that area has flourished and with the addition of freeways and universities and master planned communities. Everything is coming together to create a part of uh, town that, uh, again, it's no secret why Apple is locating there. This is truly, again, without exaggeration, the best place in the United States to locate a business. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue to see announcements like we saw yesterday in that part of our community. Um, moving around the community, if you don't mind, we'll just keep talking about now the, the gateway, or I'm sorry, the Falcon Field area. Uh, the Falcon Field area is a jewel. It's uh, currently the home of Boeing, uh, one of our uh, major assets as a community. I'm so thrilled that we have Boeing in our community, 5,000 high paying, wonderful jobs. Um, across the street, we have MD Helicopter. The last couple of months, I've taken a tour both at Boeing and, and MD Helicopter. I got to tell you, um, any community in the world would would cut off its right arm to get one of those businesses in their in their city. We're so fortunate to have them. Um, the Falcon Field area supports 12,000 jobs, 2.3 billion dollars in annual economic activity in the Falcon Field area. Um, just to continue around maybe the 101, uh, working our way over to where we stand now, the Riverview area. Uh, except, well, and West Mesa, West Mesa generally is home to 74,000 jobs. Uh, sometimes I think we forget uh, how much West Mesa, how, how important West Mesa is. Really most of the jobs, most of the activity in our community occur within just a couple of miles of where we are right now. And I think it's easy for us to forget that. Uh, Riverview has been just a huge success. Um, as I talked about earlier, uh, we're all going to get a big kick out of enjoying the spring training activities that go there. But the thing that I find so exciting is every time I drive by the Riverview Park, whether it's early in the morning or late at night, it seems like there's about 100 kids that are in that playground uh, hanging uh, from the Tower of Death that we've constructed there. Uh, what a, great, what a great asset to our community uh, that park has been. Uh, hopefully there's no deposition uh, recording going on. Um, but R Riverview is, is, is huge for us, and it's going to continue. We, we, we broke ground uh, just a couple of days ago on new office buildings that are going to go there. You're going to continue to see huge economic activity out at Riverview. Uh, continuing into downtown, I can't tell you how excited I am 
for later this year, the arrival of the light rail to uh, Mesa Drive. And then two years from now, the light rail will continue out to Gilbert Road. Uh, I have to admit, uh, 20 years ago, to being somewhat skeptical as to the benefits of the light rail. Uh, but I'm delighted to tell you that I, was, I couldn't have been more wrong. Uh, the light rail is a huge success. As a transportation system, it is full of riders, particularly uh, the demographic of uh, millennials and seniors. They just love the light rail. Everyone loves the light rail. But, but as good as it is as a transportation system, I have to tell you it's even better as an economic redevelopment system. The property values along the light rail corridor coming into downtown Mesa have been climbing and climbing. And it's been exciting for me as a mayor over the last several weeks to be continually, nearly daily, approached by serious business proposals for exciting projects to come in along the light rail. A few years, uh, a year or so from now, we're going to look at downtown Mesa and we're going to say this is a huge overnight success. Well, I have to tell you, it's been a decade or two in the coming, and it will take a decade or two for it to really reach its full potential. But we are going to be uh, very pleased with our downtown as the light rail continues into our community. Uh, the Fiesta District, I'm also very excited about. You may know that the city has been making some huge investments in the streetscape uh, in the Fiesta District. That has really had some significant improvements with regard to the aesthetics of the street. Uh, but a lot of the investment that's going out there, you, frankly, you can't see because it's underground. It's been conduit, it's been dark fiber, it's been the things that we need to do to set the stage for some very significant commercial redevelopment in that area. So um, please stay tuned. You're going to see some great uh, and exciting announcements relative to the Fiesta District before too long. Um, so again, I think economically we are headed in a great direction. Uh, I think we're going to continue to see more and more announcements of good high paying jobs coming to Mesa. Um, the other thing I'd like to say, though, about the economy is, um, I, again, I've, I've owned and operated a, a business in Mesa for, I think, 25 years or so. Uh, and as part of that, I've occasionally had the need to uh, remodel a property, buy a small property. I'm not a real estate developer, but I have had one or two experiences in that area. So I, I feel the, uh, the pain for those who are in that industry who stand in line at city counters and work with planners and try to negotiate all of the intricacies of actually building something. Sometimes I'm shocked that anybody can actually accomplish that task. Um, so having had that experience, I came into this job uh, hoping to make that process a little more consumer friendly. So I, I just want to talk briefly about a couple of things that, that we've done very recently. The first is a program called self-certification. And this is something that we implemented last month in the month of December. I guess, well, I'm sorry, it's February now. In the month of December. What this is, is if you walk into a, a, a city uh, filing counter and you have plans that are stamped by an approved architect or engineer, uh, we're going to defer to the expertise of, of your professional. And that's going to expedite the processing of your application by about a couple of months. Uh, and this is for projects ranging from single family homes up to large commercial buildings. Um, so I think that will hopefully uh, lighten some of the traditional problems associated with working with the city. The next thing is that we've made an investment in what we need to do to uh, start the electronic plans review process and a one-stop licensing. So in the near future, you're going to be able to go online. You won't even have to stand in line at the city, but you'll be able to go online, fill out a form, and that will be good for it, it submitting your plans as well as uh, all of the different licenses that you need to get from the city. So um, I just want you to know that we, it's a goal shared by myself and our city council and our city management for Mesa to be recognized as the most business friendly, the easiest community to get along with when it comes to developing your business in Mesa. Um, and again, the, the goal on all of this is to save you time and money and to create that, uh, that positive relationship with the business community. So let me move now on to placemaking, if you don't mind. Um, it, it's great to have uh, good jobs in a city. It's great to have low taxes and be a well-managed city. But I, it's not just about math, I think, when people are making decisions as to where they want to live and whether or not this is a great community. Uh, if that were the case, I think no one would live in Southern California, frankly. Because if you just do the math, why would you, do, why would you live there? It's about quality of life. It's about wanting to, to live in a, in a community. Um, 
And so it's important that we spend time and energy as a community creating some great places, some reasons for people to live here other than, than having a job. Um, and I'm anxious to do that. And part of what I would like to, to do in that regard is spend some increased emphasis on our downtown. I've been asked, why are you bullish on downtown? Why uh, are you spending time and energy on that? I have to tell you that uh, downtown has been a part of my life my whole life. I have great memories of, as a child of uh, sitting at uh, everybody's drugstore and buying my school jeans at LaSueur's uh, men's store and going to J.C. Penney's, all in uh, you know, the block or two of downtown Mesa. I, I can visualize what a great community that was and what a great asset that was. And I can also visualize it being something similar to that going forward. I think all of Mesa is going to be able to to take a lot of pride in what in the assets that we have in downtown Mesa. Whether you live in Los Endes or Dobson Ranch, uh, I think we're all going to be proud of downtown. It's going to be the place that we can bring our family from out of town. It's going to be the place that Mayor Lane's going to bring people to, to go out to lunch. <laughs> it, it really is going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a great source of pride. Uh, and the best way that I can uh, explain, I think, the potential for downtown Mesa is to talk about my old truck. This is my 1952 Chevy pickup truck. Um, I love my wife, but this is really a cool truck, okay? <laughs> it's my favorite thing, okay? Maybe it might be the best way to say it. Um, whenever I am in this truck, I am the most popular guy in town. Uh, people literally wave and stop, and I, every time I get out to put gas in it, the people are just lining up to talk about uh, how cool me and my truck are, okay? Um, if anybody ever wants to run for public office, I, I would suggest the first thing you do is go get a 1952 Chevy pickup truck. Um, why is that? I think uh, it, it's because it has a lot of the same quality that our downtown has, a, a shiny, new building that doesn't have a lot of character is not nearly as much fun as a historic building. Uh, a shiny new pickup truck is not nearly as much fun as an old pickup truck. Uh, we can strike a great balance. The, the downtown Mesa has tremendous bones, tremendous uh, potential, uh, and I think it's really worth our time and our energy to, to turn it into what, uh, to the real jewel that it can be. Um, speaking of downtown and what we can do to make it a dynamic place, uh, I'd like to introduce Brian Marshall, who's uh, going to talk to us on a video about downtown. In a good urban place-making type of environment, you have very, very effective accidental encounter on a pedestrian human scale. So it might take you five minutes longer to go from lunch back to the office or back home because you bumped into somebody else. Um, but that's the sense of place that you get from bumping into many, many other people all at the same time. And you can actually have a really fantastic small downtown and a really fantastic big town town. Um, you've got uh, downtown Tempe, that's a medium-sized downtown growing into a big one. You have downtown Prescott, which is a very small downtown, but fantastic character, wonderful place-making elements within downtown Prescott. So in Mesa, it, it, it's interesting to see how it's going to evolve, whether it's going to be a small to medium downtown or if it's going to be a, a big downtown. Uh, my bet is it's going to be a medium-sized downtown that's going to have fantastic urbanism elements with more people. We need to infuse more people within it but it doesn't need to be big in order to be great. And I'm really impressed with where it's been going. It has light rail going right down the center of Main Street. It also has a fantastic existing urban fabric. You can see right here, all the storefronts, the diversity. I think there's gonna be a lot more happening in downtown Mesa in the future. So yes, we've done a couple strategic acquisitions to try to be a part of what's happening here in downtown Mesa. Now, one thing that Mesa um, does have um, in its quiver is it has many, many uh, properties under its own ownership in that square mile that I talked about. And so Mesa can um, learn from downtown Tempe because downtown Tempe was the same way. Many of those parcels were controlled by the city and then they went ahead and uh, formed groups to decide what would be the best way to develop, to develop downtown Tempe. 
and and then how do we how do we utilize these properties to meet those goals that we have established ourselves? Mesa totally can do that. People who live within the city and people who may visit the city from elsewhere uh, within the valley are going to identify that city, the city of Mesa, with its downtown. So if the perception is it's a vibrant, exciting place to go, then the city of Mesa will be considered an exciting, vibrant place to go. And then that will also help with economic development, whether it's within downtown, which we hope it is, or outside of downtown, but still within the city of Mesa. I think that's something that uh, we need to really, really grasp and to believe in within downtown Mesa to take advantage of that. Thanks, thanks, Brian, and I would encourage everyone in the room to think uh, if, if, whether or not there's a role you can play in helping us to revitalize downtown. I, I appreciate the great businesses that are there. I gotta tell you, the funnest thing that I've done to this point uh, as mayor is to give people tours of the, of the MAC, the Mesa Arts Center. If you haven't been there recently, you're, you're really cheating yourself. It, really, it truly is a world-class facility. A, a couple of years ago, it won the award for being the venue of the year in the world beating out facilities like the Sydney Opera House. It's, it's dramatic and it's beautiful. But again, the, the, the funnest thing I've done so far as mayor is a couple of times giving people a tour of the Mac, and as you walk someone into the Ikea theater for the first time, there's just a physical reaction to it. There's a, there's a literal gasp at, uh, at how dramatic and how beautiful that facility is. So it's a great jewel in our community, and we need to maximize it. We need to build around it. We need to support it. Well, our hope is to build an entertainment district in downtown Mesa that supports that great facility. And as Brian indicated, the city is in a very good uh, position to, uh, to, do, to help that happen. We own a tremendous amount of uh, property there. We also own all of the utilities, including electric. We can make a very attractive um, uh, proposals with the private sector to partner to, to see good things happen in downtown. And as we do that, as we create those spaces, we're committed to also expanding free Wi-Fi, free public access to Wi-Fi downtown that will again add to the experience and, and make uh, downtown Mesa a place that we can all be very proud of. So please help us in, in that effort. The, the third and final uh, topic that I want to discuss today is the importance of Mesa being a community that is well known for respecting and welcoming everyone. Um, my experience growing up in Mesa and operating a business here and raising a family here is that that is the type of community that we live in. Uh, it's diverse, uh, it's friendly, uh, it's, and that's part of our strength. That's what makes Mesa such a great community. Um, a few months ago when I was a candidate for mayor, we did a, a short video that kind of told the story of, of that atmosphere in the city of Mesa that I'd like to share with you now. If you grew up in Mesa when I did, you fell into one of two categories. You were either a modest family or an El Charo family. These families didn't get along well, and on the rare occasion when they married into each other, things could get interesting. As for my family, everyone knew what side we were on. I used to wonder what kind of people would eat at El Charo. Dad said all I needed to know was that they served macaroni salad and coleslaw. But as I grew older, it all began to seem so silly. So finally, I did it. I darkened El Charo's door. You can probably guess what happened. I found out what kind of people do eat at El Charo. The awesome kind. I've learned this little lesson over and over in life. Mesa is just like the rest of the world. It's filled with different groups of people, different neighborhoods, different schools and churches, 
But in the end, we're all the same. And if I'm lucky enough to be your next mayor, you can bet that I'll represent all Masons with all my heart. Even those who like their Mexican food served with macaroni salad or coleslaw, like me. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I, I guess I, I was uh, lucky enough to be your next mayor, so I appreciate that. But uh, that the video kind of, to me, captures the spirit of, of Mesa. I think we are, again, a very diverse and welcoming community. Um, and so for that reason, and to help tell that story, um, the first week in January at a um, Faith Leaders Prayer Breakfast, I had the privilege of launching something that we're calling the One Mesa Pledge. Um, and that was done at a, at a, um, a For Our City event. Uh, Linda Mosier, who's in our audience, is the chair of that group. That's a group that we are using in the city to draw on the power and the, the strength of the, the, the strong faith community that we have in our city. Uh, and the reason that we did it at that forum is because this One Mesa Pledge, frankly, is not a City of Mesa program. Uh, we think that's probably not the best way to uh, address the issue of diversity and respect. It has to be a community program. It has to be in our churches. It has to be in our schools. It has to be in our service clubs. It has to be in our families. Uh, so for that reason, uh, it's an I'm anxious for everyone in the community to, to get engaged and to learn more about that. Uh, also, to, to share just a few, in, a little bit of insight on this topic is my good friend, Deanna Villanueva Saucedo. Please uh, direct your attention to the video screen for her. has often been a misunderstood city. People's uh, outside impressions of us, I have always found to be very different than what we really are. Uh, Mesa has a very long and I think uh, strong tradition of diversity and uh, having a variety of folks, a variety of different interests, different populations within our borders. And I think people perceive us very differently. So the mayor's one Mesa pledge, I think really encourages people to have that kind of conversation. Who are we really? And uh, let's celebrate all the different facets that exist within our community. Diversity tends to be um, a word that has a lot of baggage associated with it. I think, again, we sometimes get so involved with the day-to-day -day busyness of our lives that we don't get out of, out of our own little neighborhoods or out of our own little bubbles and really recognize the 400,000 plus other residents that comprise our community. And so it's important to take a moment and, and really look around who we are. I think it's a conversation that's long overdue. Uh, I think for those of us that live and work in the community, we recognize that we are very diverse, but to have such an open proclamation, it almost gives an implicit um, permission or encouragement to have those kinds of conversations to help those that aren't part of Mesa or maybe aren't as familiar with our community to see what we're really about and those that live here to maybe get out of their own comfort zone or their own small neighborhood and really see all the variety that uh, re resides within Mesa. In having conversations with my own son and the students that I work with, I find great hope in our youngest generation. For them, inclusivity is really um, the way that they live their lives. They don't really take uh, much consideration in terms of differences and defining those differences. They're very eager to celebrate and don't recognize um, or acknowledge some of those barriers that maybe prior generations have had. So I think their outlook is really different than uh, older generations and something that we could probably learn a lot from. Personally, I'm supportive of the One Mesa Pledge because it encourages encourages people to, one, not only recognize the diversity that we have within Mesa, but have an open conversation about that. And I think for some people, maybe it would be a struggle. I would hope not. I tend to be very positive, um, but I think it encourages us to really examine who we are and celebrate who we are and all the different facets that exist within Mesa. Thanks, Deanna. Uh, there are cards at your tables uh, regarding the One Mesa Pledge. I would invite you tonight, uh, or as you go home, to, to take a look at that pledge and to consider signing on and showing your support for this uh, important topic so that we can let the business community, we can let people who are looking at Mesa know that this is a priority, this is part of our core values as a community. That will pay great dividends as we uh, continue to market our community for economic development. 
but uh, more importantly, it's the right thing to do, and it, and it will strengthen our community and, and the people that live here. Um, in closing, let me just again say thank you so much for being here, and thank you for letting me have this fantastic job. Uh, I, uh, I couldn't be more excited to be the mayor of Mesa. I take this job and this challenge very personally. Um, I am at the stage in life where my children are starting to graduate from college and they're starting to look for jobs and, they're, and, and I would love nothing more for them than to have the opportunity to come to Mesa. Um, and for that to happen, we need to be able to compete uh, in the global economy that is, is part of, of the reality of, of, of where we're at as a community. Uh, I don't want my kids to have to move to Austin, Texas, or to Denver, Colorado, or to Salt Lake City, or one of the hot spots, or one of the, the states and the cities that is uh, uh, aggressively um, trying to compete in this environment. Mesa needs to be uh, in that fight uh, for ourselves and for those uh, future generations that, that we want to enjoy this community. So um, my job is to make that happen and to continue to help us to, to go from from one Mesa to another as a community. Um, this has been my opportunity this morning to share that vision with you. I, I hope it, that you've, you've heard some things here that resonate with you and some things that you can, can join in on. But I am uh, very interested in hearing from you. Uh, I realize that uh, I'm very limited in my ability to come up with good ideas. I need the support and ideas from you. For the last four and a half months, we've been trying desperately to en engage as much as possible with the community through social media. Uh, all of us are walking around with smartphones in our pockets or in front of uh, computer desks all day long. And social media, I think, is a, is a part of our life. We're, as a, the mayor's office is trying to engage the community through that. So you can see we've got uh, every platform that we can. We're trying to reach out to people. If you would do me the favor of providing feedback and your thoughts on this next Mesa idea, uh, I would really appreciate it. Just use the hashtag next Mesa and that will help us to uh, collect your thoughts and feelings that, and, and hopefully that will give us some more great traction as we continue in this process. Uh, and again, I'd have to say that I, I really look forward to earning your trust in this position uh, and to engaging with the community and engaging with this great city council that we have to take this great city of ours to the next Mesa. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for joining us for the Mayor's State of the City Breakfast, presented by the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Travel along, there's one day here and the next day gone. Sometimes you've been, sometimes you stand, sometimes you turn.